when you were back, were you back or did you? No, I was like again, one foot again? in the church and one foot in the world still. Yeah. I, I was, um, I joined the church choir and, you know, uh -huh. and I decided I was going to be involved in church. But, you know, because of my job, there was a lot of pressure that you still had to go out and you had to show up and all of that. And so um, I tried to escape that as much as possible and not participate in that. And then I just decided, you know, it, I was carpooling with a coworker and I thought, I'll just be the responsible driver. And so I can't drink, you know. <laughs> so I just kind of put a stop to that as much as I could. Um, were, were the people around you accepting or? Not really. No. There was a lot of pressure. So there was some A lot of there. pressure. A lot of pressure. Interesting. It all came to a head in 2004. Um, I was the top salesperson in the company that year. And the Christmas party was in New York City on a Friday night. And uh, my boss came to me and said, uh, I'll see you Friday night. And I said, no, actually you won't. I said, I have a choir practice and we have a big program the next day in church. You know that I'm in the choir at my church and so I'm not gonna be at the Christmas party actually. And this was maybe Wednesday during the week. And so he said, no, you will be at the Christmas party. I said, no, I won't. I said, there's no way that I would make it in time. And besides it's the Sabbath and that's not where I belong on the Sabbath. And he said, if you don't show up at that Christmas party, he, no, he said, the, the president of the company is coming to the New York City Christmas party because of you, because you're the top salesperson in the company. Oh, well. And if you don't show up at that Christmas party, you should not bother to show up coming to work the next Monday. Wait, and he said this to his top salesperson? Yes. Wow. So what happened? Well, God worked things in a very... In interesting way, the very next day, I was coming back to the office from the field. This was a Thursday. I was coming back from the field, and I was driving on the Long Island Expressway, and all of a sudden, the hood of my car flipped back, smashed the windshield. This is in rush hour traffic. Oh, I don't know how. An angel must have cleared the path for me to be able to pull over. Yeah. I called, you know, for I called AAA. I called, they were sending a tow truck. I called one of my coworkers. I carpooled with from time to time. He came and picked me up, brought me back to the office. He said, I'll take you home. And I said, you know, can you take me to Enterprise? I got to rent a car. So anyway, he takes me to the rental car place and they give me this huge, this 2004 Suburban, huge oh. SUV. It was brand new. And they asked, do you want the insurance? And I said, yes. And he's standing next to me. He says, dude, you're a good driver. You don't need the insurance convinced me not to get the insurance. I said, all right. He said, you have your insurance. I said, yeah, I do. No problem, didn't get the insurance. I drive home, walk my dog. Yeah, I'm holding my breath here. I'm wondering what's gonna happen with Yeah, well, just wait. <laughs> I drive to the church, go to choir practice. After choir practice, I drive to a train station in Deer Park, park the vehicle, get on the train, go to Manhattan to this Christmas party. Guess what? The president decided to go to the Boston Christmas party. He didn't come to New York City. All of my coworkers are drunk, plastered, out of their minds. And you walk in, you see this. I walk in, and I was so mad the president wasn't there. I ended up having a Long Island iced tea. The bar was kicking, kicking us out. It was late at that time. And so we all go back to Penn Station. There was a TGIF there. And we go in there. We had an hour to wait for our train. So we go in. I had one more drink there. And we finally get on our train. All of my coworkers are passed out. I'm the only one awake. They all miss their stops. And you know, I was the last stop. They get off and they said, oh, man, we missed our stops. You got to take us home. Take us all home. And they say that when you're drinking, the first thing you lose is your sense of reason. <laughs> and that's absolutely true. And so I said, sure, I'll take you all home. Meanwhile, I lived a half an hour to 40 minutes that way, and they wanted to go 40 minutes the other direction. Anyway, I'm taking these people home, and my coworker that we, I used to carpool with, I had trained him, you know, and our cubicles were next to each other. He was sitting next to me in the passenger seat. What I didn't know is him and one of our other coworkers were doing drugs at the party, and he told me, I gotta go to Luke's house, take me to Amityville right now. And I said, let me drop these people off, and then I'll drop you off there. We were passing the exit for Route 110, and he said, dude, get off this exit right now. And I said, no, let me take these people home, and, and then I'll take you, and then I'll take you to Luke's house. 
He said, no, I want to go now. I was like, chill out, dude. He said, if you don't get off this exit right now, I'm going to flip this truck and kill every single one of you. He's in the passenger seat. I'm driving. He elbows me in the chest, grabs the wheel, flips the truck. Flips? Entirely. It went on its side. Now, on the Long Island Expressway, there's ravines that go down on the side. It had to be many angels there, or maybe one is strong enough. I don't know. The truck flips down on its side. It's rolling down the ravine. All of a sudden, it comes back up on all four wheels. I was like, get out quick, check the damage. I put the thing in drive and I'm trying to drive away and it wouldn't move. A cop saw the whole thing happen. And? They came up, made me get out of the car, gave me a breathalyzer sure. test, which I failed. Ooh. I get arrested. They all get home somehow, I don't know. And I was sitting in the precinct. I was handcuffed and I was chained between a drug dealer and a prostitute. And I was just bawling, crying. Snot coming out of my nose. It was horrible, 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 horrible. And you know what thought came to my mind? My sister's a lawyer. I can call her. I can hide this from my earthly father, but my heavenly father knows exactly where I am and what I'm doing. Mm. So they, I think we're sick of my crying, so they put me in a, in a cell in another area. I still continued to cry all night long. I made my one phone call to my sister. She said, I'll see you in court in the morning. I didn't sleep a wink. I was crying all night long, just spending time with God, apologizing to him, you know, seeking repentance, forgiveness. The morning came and the judge was being ruthless handing out ridiculous sentences. My sister knew I had gone back to church, said, you better start praying. 